Toy 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 and the forecasting chaos continues as I literally feel like I'm being pulled in two different directions as we've had some major changes in the overnight models. Let's take a look at the latest next. Welcome back everybody to the Weather Nerds YouTube page. I'm meteorologist Greg Majeski and before we get started, we finally did it. I want to thank everybody. We did go over the 500 subscriber level. We're currently at 505, so I want to thank all 505 of you here on the page. And for those of you who have not joined the channel just yet, please consider it. It'd be an honor for you to have you here as part of this growing weather family. Now today we're going to talk about chaos. Yeah, we're talking about some big changes in the overnight models once again. So here are the things you need to know. We're going to talk about first atmospheric chaos. I'm going to try to explain to you why we've been seeing the model shift day to day uh, with this next storm system coming at us here for the weekend. We're going to talk about the changes in the snow totals. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, what originally looked like was going to be a big snow event for the Midwest may not be such a big deal at all. In fact, maybe the Northeast will get more in on the action. And then finally, we're going to talk about uh, the severe weather threat. We'll show you the precipitation outlook on the European model here, taking you through the upcoming weekend as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and zoom in here to the jet stream. We're going to show you a little bit of what's going on, okay? Now, this is for this upcoming Saturday. And what I want to kind of show you here is you've got the two different jet streams here kind of flowing along. So here's the one jet stream kind of flowing through here. This is the subtropical jet stream flowing down here toward the south. Now, when we were forecasting this earlier in the week, we thought these two jet streams were going to come together across the southwest. We thought the southwest was where we were going to get that. It didn't happen there. It kind of shifted more toward the east. And then that's not happening. So now it doesn't look like it's going to come together until it gets almost to the east coast. So as a result of that, obviously the storm system's progression or development is going to shift further and further to the east. So as I go through this going into Sunday... I want you to watch the East Coast because what you're going to notice when you start seeing the yellows in there, that's when the higher wind speeds are coming in there. That's when the two jets are kind of merging their energies and kind of coming together. So watch as I go ahead and step you through this as we go through time uh, going, into, going into Sunday morning. You're noticing the yellow starting to increase in there throughout the day on Sunday. So by the end of the day, uh, you're getting some very good jet energy here along the eastern seaboard here as the jets have kind of merged together. So you got the jet stream kind of coming up from the south, uh, coming in like this, uh, coming around and kind of joining forces there along the eastern seaboard. Now, as I go forward, I'm just going to go ahead and step you through this through the entire model run. One thing I definitely notice is that the models become even more chaotic. I mean, look here toward the end of the run as we've got the jet stream here showing uh, kind of going up like this. You kind of got going like this. You got a southern, you almost got three jets here kind of doing their own thing, all working against each other. So the atmospheric chaos are trying to forecasting will continue to be a little bit of a nightmare for forecasters, even heading into the middle of the month. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the latest snow projections for this next storm. So we're going to start off first with the European model, and then I'm going to switch you over to the American GFS model. We're going to start here on Friday. As you can see, we've got some snows that have been falling uh, coming through Colorado as the system kind of traversed the, the Rockies. And originally, we were looking at a, perhaps a very heavy snow amount kind of running right through here uh, originally a couple days ago. And that has really backed off substantially here. Let me take you through time here and show you where this is going to evolve. Remember, I showed you the jet stream energy was shifting to the east coast. And as a result, the snow threat is also going to shift further to the east. So as I progress through time, you're still seeing a little bit of snow there as we get into Sunday morning. So Sunday morning, you're noticing here, we're getting a little snow right through here, but much less. I mean, we're talking maybe just a couple of inches. The next really ground zero now looks like it's going to be predominantly up here into the northeast as we head into throughout the day on Sunday and into Monday. So as I step you further through time here, look what happens throughout the day on Sunday. Uh, as we're going into Monday morning, you're seeing the snows, most of it falling on Sunday there across most of Pennsylvania, uh, going into a lot of, uh, of New York State and coming up through the Appalachians. This is where the heaviest snows are falling. In coincidence, that's exactly where that jet energy was uh, kind of screaming on through there uh, going in to this upcoming weekend. And then if you really want to look out beyond uh, this upcoming weekend, taking you out to the end of the 10-day European, uh, yeah, it's setting off another snow event down here toward the south, uh, down here toward the Texas Panhandle, New Mexico, and Oklahoma, uh, this far south. I will say 
uh, just judging by the way the atmosphere has been behaving and the way the long range models have been behaving, I'm not putting a lot of credence on that one just yet. We'll watch it closely as we get closer to it. But when it comes to this next snow event, it doesn't look like it's going to be nearly as big a deal uh, for the Midwest and shifting more toward the Northeast. Uh, let's go ahead and shift over to the American GFS model. I'm going to go ahead and shift you over to that one and we'll step you through that one as well. And we'll take you through time and check out how that one progresses in comparison. So as I step forward here through time, as I going through this Wednesday and going in, taking it up to this Friday Friday evening, this is where I started the other one. So there's Friday evening. Again, you're seeing they line up pretty good going out three days. Pretty close, the European and the GFS model. Then as we go through time, you're seeing the snows there across Iowa, Wisconsin, and Michigan, maybe a little bit more than what the European was initially showing. But again, not getting that major snowstorm here across the Midwest and up into Michigan as we were showing just 24 hours ago because of the jet progressing further to the east. Now, as I go ahead and step you further to, to, through time and going you through Saturday and throughout the day on Sunday, uh, you see in the snows coming in here, this is actually a little bit later in the day on the GFS, kind of going more into Monday morning. You're seeing the snows across uh, areas of New York and going into Canada. But even then, these totals are not as impressive as what we're showing on the European model for the same general area. But they are in fairly good agreement that we're not going to get as much snow across the Midwest now. And the new now it looks like more toward New York and the Northeast will get the heavier snow event with this next snowstorm. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the progression of these storms on the European and the precipitation outlook. So before as I go through the European model here, we still got a severe component to this, although we still have some differences in timing uh, between the models uh, as far as when it's going to be impacted. The Storms Prediction Center has this area, just a marginal risk here uh, for areas of Oklahoma and Arkansas. And this is for Friday night and into Saturday. But the European model is kind of showing everything gone by there by the time we get there. So uh, watch that very closely as I think we're going to see that area probably shift into day four. And I'll show you that here in a second here as uh, so those storms kind of progress through the southeast. So as we go over here to the European model, we're going to go ahead and take a look at where we're at right now. We'll zoom in a little bit closer and we'll take a look at where we're seeing the, the low pressure there across Kansas uh, for the moment. This is going into late in the day on Friday. So this is going into late in the day on Friday. You're seeing this little piece of energy right through here. This is what's going to bring that little bit of snow up here um, across portions of the Midwest. And then we'll watch for things to get more active here across the southeast as that storm system begins to progress off toward the east. So as I step you through here, uh, going through time as we go throughout the day on Saturday, you're seeing the storms kind of flaring up. And then by the time we head into late in the day on Saturday, uh, that's when we're expecting things to kind of fire up across the southeast. So the day four outlook here, and I'm just going to kind of just draw this ballpark's going to be kind of right in here is where we're going to be looking at the potential for uh, maybe some isolated severe thunderstorms. And I think the big threat will be some very gusty winds with some of these individual thunderstorms. So I'm going to track you through this again, going through time as we go forward into Sunday morning. You're seeing the storms kind of lining up there across areas of the mid Midwest and coming into the Southeast. I'm sorry, go right through here. And a little bit of snow on the back end of this as that cold air kind of runs into that cold front uh, as we progress through the day on Sunday. So uh, this is on December the 10th as we go forward. You see the low kind of going up there. Uh, and uh, starting to get stronger, starting to drop off, but you see this heavier snows kind of coming into areas of New York State on the back side of this right through here in Pennsylvania as things clear the southeast, as and this is going through about midnight on Sunday, going into Monday morning. And then by the time we get into throughout the day on Monday, later in the day on the Monday, the storm system finally clears the east coast, and we're looking at things looking pretty quiet from west to east looking pretty good there overall so it's something we're going to watch very closely through the weekend i know it's a little aggravating when you go back and forth and seeing the models change like this as they bring it back to me right here we're going to see uh things uh will get a little more fine-tuned i think once we get in within inside about three days i think we'll get a pretty good lock in here on the exact areas as far as um, the snow potential as well as the severe weather potential. But I think we're starting to see both models starting to gel together. It's just a little bit of discrepancy as far as the intensity uh, of where the, exactly the storms line up and where the, exactly the heavier snows will line up. That's probably the only bit of discrepancy there. But the general areas, I think, are pretty locked in. That's it for now. You guys take it easy. If you have not done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that notification bell for future updates. 
give me a thumbs up. If you got a comment or something down below, please leave it down below. Again, it helps with the YouTube algorithm. I'm learning this on the fly for sure. All right, that's it for now. You guys take it easy, and we'll see you on the next report. Until then, you guys take it easy. Bye-bye.